And then there's one issue that has never been talked about in the House of Commons, not once. I checked. I see, this technology has a lot of people asking, is this going to replace my job as a teacher or as a receptionist, a journalist, or even an author? And the truth is, we don't really know. Well, time will tell there. Hopefully they won't. I know they've talked about uh, AI replacing us, actually, oh. anchors. Yeah, that was a story back in the day, but hopefully that won't happen. Now, normally, we do talk to people, but today we are talking to... It's called Chat GPT. Chat GPT. Chat GPT. Revolutionary new language model developed by OpenAI with the ability to generate human-like text and hold natural conversations. Chat GPT is poised to change the way we interact with computers and AI. In fact, Chat GPT wrote everything I just said when we asked it to write an introduction to this piece. Tech tool. Tell me a story. The world has been going crazy about the release of the new Chat GPT language model. It's so crazy and powerful that in just five days it reached one million users. That's an adoption rate 15 times faster than Instagram and 30 times faster than Spotify. If that doesn't simultaneously excite you and scare you at the same time, then you aren't paying attention to what this really actually means. This is not just about a chatbot that can write, that can talk, that can tell stories or help you do your homework. It's a chatbot that like a lot of the newest AI innovations is really at its core a catalyst it lowers the activation energy. It reduces the difficulty of starting challenging tasks. And really, despite all the scary dystopian news, it facilitates innovation and spreads power. In this video, I'm going to show you a simple version, but nonetheless, a digestible exemplar of how language models like ChatGPT will revolutionize the way we code the way we problem solve, and the way we will innovate. Stick around to see just how powerful this really is. For those that aren't subscribed, I made an introductory video series on how to make an augmented reality app with Unity for the mobile phone. The game was quite simple. The way it worked was that by pressing on the screen, the player could instantiate either a mama bird or a baby bird object. The red mama birds floated upwards and rotated towards the user, while the purple baby birds would fly out of the screen into the real world looking for their mama bird. If you know how to code, then you know that this is a rudimentary task. But it still requires learning about internal Unity C Sharp functions, like quaternion rotations, AR ray casting, and dealing with UI elements along with AR-related touch events. In the original tutorial, we created three scripts. The first handles the mama bird behavior, the second one handles the baby bird behavior. And then there's a manager script that decided when and how each of the mama birds or baby birds were deployed into the real world space. So I asked ChatGPT to create each of these scripts in simple English. For the first one, I asked, please write a Unity script called GPT Mama Bird, where the object rotates towards a camera object at a slow speed and also moves upwards at a slow speed. For the second script, the baby bird script, I asked, please write a Unity script called GPT Baby Bird that looks for all objects in the scene with the tag Mama Bird and randomly selects one and attaches it to a variable called Mama Bird. The object with the script needs to rotate and look towards the mama bird variable at a slow speed and also follow the mama bird object. And lastly, for the third one, the more complicated one, I asked, please write an AR Foundation Unity script 
called GPT Content Manager that uses a canvas toggle object in a function to toggle between two game objects, one of them called Mama Bird Prefab and the other one called Baby Bird Prefab. The script will instantiate one of the two prefabs with a force when the user taps on the screen that isn't a UI or canvas game object. What I then did was I created each script by copy and pasting the outputs from ChatGPT and adding them into the corresponding game objects. I added the GPT Mama Bird script to the Mama Bird object, the GPT Baby Bird to the Baby Bird object, and then created a new empty game object called Content Manager, on which I added the GPT Content Manager script. I then dragged the appropriate game objects from the hierarchy into the script variables that ChatGPT had declared as public. Finally, I connected my phone to the computer and then I hit build. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. I mean, this is a pretty big deal. It has been. With this new ChatGPT, which is actually a simpler version than its sibling GPT-3 and the up and coming GPT-4. I mean, this game that, this, this game that ChatGPT recorded isn't complex. It's just objects flying around from simple touch events but it only took me a few minutes. If I were making a more complicated game, this could save me hours and cumulatively days and even months. I think like many other articles and videos before this one have already said, the implications of this and Midjourney or Dolly or any of these other powerful generative AI tools, their implications, I mean, they, it goes without saying. I think it's easy not to want to be impressed and to try to find mistakes and issues with the outputs, with the bias, with devious intentions, with anything to do with AI. Some of us may want to sort of fight the technology and maybe even protest it. And I think that it might be a sort of survivalish instinct that drives us to do that. I do think it's necessary to do that in general because, well, Uncle Ben was right. With great power comes great responsibility. But I do think that sometimes we should pause and really appreciate how fictional technology has become and to sit back and sort of just take it all in and forget about the existential angst and kind of be proud. Humans are pretty cool when they're not being awful. We live in an amazing time. If you haven't seen it yet, I made a little documentary about the history and ethical future of the metaverse. I go over what the current state of affairs is, the laws, and what virtual and augmented reality means for the future of mankind. Check it out, if you want. Thanks for watching. <laughs>